The Fraser River provided a multitude of different jobs. One of the most prominent industries was fishing. New Westminster's proximity to the river made commercial fishing a popular endeavor. For years, many families based their livelihoods on the populations of fish in the river. All were nuts about the water. Grew up on the water. We all, all were gill netters. There was a boat with a, a drum, like a big spool on the back. So when we go to put our net out, we run the boat out, we throw the end of the net out into the river with a marker on it, a big, we call them scotch, those big red orange bumpers. Yeah, we put an end, an orange one on the end, and we run the net. We want to come like across the river. So we throw the scotchman here, and we head this way, and then we drift, the whole thing would drift down river. And the idea was to keep like a horseshoe in your net, so the fish coming up would be funneled into the net. And then when it came time to bring the net in, you had a, it was hooked up so you could power the drum, so the drum would turn and pull the net in. And as it came in, you'd pick the fish out. My wife, she always came with me fishing. She was my first mate. And we fished together. And out of all the families here, Bertie Lambert was the only one. His wife, Elaine, used to go fishing with him. And the rest of them, the women wouldn't come. But she came with me and we worked really good together as a pair. But she has arthritis really bad now. And I'm thinking it's from the fishing. It probably hurt her joints. In you know, our family, all the things were generated on Adam's River, Saka. The year we got a new car, that was an Adam's River year. The year we got a new TV, it was Adam's River. You know, the, everything was, you know, they got a picture window in the front room, that was Adam's River. So those were important events. The house was built as they could afford it. So the, the kitchen and the back part were built in the bathroom, and underneath was open. And uh, it, it didn't get completed until, like an Adams River year, they do more and more. So, um, so there was fish boats up further too mm -hmm. that were docked. Of course, my folks used to come down and buy fish, and, uh, and then we had once a week, I guess it was. This Japanese fellow, he would come up, walk up there with his poles and fish in the baskets. And he would yell, fishy today, fishy today, as he came, you know. And the old cat would go running because she knew he had some fish for her. But yeah, he, you know, he was carrying his poles with his baskets on each side. So he must have picked it up you know, somewhere down on the docks, and, oh. and then he went up there because he, well, most of us didn't have a car. So he walked, he's up to, into the neighborhoods? Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that was up at 8th Avenue and by Sherbrooke and the yeah. boy. And yeah. Anyways, um, so we would come up with fish from down here. Gill netting is, you, you know, you have a net and just one guy and he picks the fish out of the net. Same thing you need, you know, about five guys. Two years, years back, we used to fish five days a week. You know, Mon used, to, used to open Monday morning and close on Friday. And uh, then it went to four day weeks and then three and then two and then one. And then that, uh, that kind of happened in, uh, I don't know, probably in the 70s. It probably started cutting back, you know, in the fishing days and things. Aside from uh, supplying uh, the fishermen with ice, what else did it, what, did, what else did they do at Edmonds and Walker? I guess they just kept track of the, the, sh the ships and the fishing boats. The fishing boats, okay. And the ice. They, okay. They, uh, they, uh, when they when they unloaded, it was processed right there on the docks, and then they they'd uh, clean them out and gut them and everything else, and then they'd freeze them. Uh, that was a we our building was in a coal storage place. Upstairs was coal storage. And so there were people that worked for Edmonds and Walker that were cleaning the fish. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Did you ever interact with them? No. Or, and did no, you ever? They all had okay. different people. Okay. The only way is when they came in and they, they bought uh, aprons, those uh, rubber aprons, and uh, gloves and stuff like that. We sold that to them. Piece okay. of Packers did. I think they were renting the boats, and the fishermen were buying uh, ice to keep mm -hmm. for their fishing boats. Yeah, yeah they had a big start. trough, the, and the fish would be dropped there and mm -hmm. clean, uh, washed a little bit. And then there was a, a lineup of people gutting them and uh, scaling them, being, you know, getting ready for a freezing. Okay. And then they were frozen upstairs in a cold storage part of the building. But I went up there, and they had them all piled like a cord of wood, but they were frozen, so mm -hmm. I guess they were in some place before. And I, I think the, maybe the, they were can the canneries, probably. Did you ever get fish to take home? Oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> when it was fresh. Our foreman, oh, he, was, he was nice.